In this video, I want to look at the syntax of the language of predicate logic. The syntax refers to the appropriate or grammatical ways of putting different symbols together to form well-formed formulas. So let's take a look at this. Okay, okay, so let's take a look at the formation rules or the syntactic rules for predicate logic. There's a couple ways of specifying these formation rules. And we are going to err on the side of simplicity rather than breadth or um, precision. So let's take a look. So here are the five formation rules or four plus a kind of additional clause. The first formation rule says that if you have an n place predicate followed by n names, then the result is a well-formed formula. So let's say you have P and P is a one place predicate. That means there is sort of one spot after it for a name or a term to kind of go in there. Then provided there is a single name after it because it's, uh, or one name after it, then the result PA is a well-formed formula. Now let's say you had a two place predicate and the two place predicate was R. And since it's a two place predicate, there's space for two terms after it. And provided you had two names after your two place predicate, the result would be a well formed formula. So with this first rule, what we're looking for is given some predicate, whether it be P or R or Q, we want to identify the number of places after it. That is what type of predicate is. Is it a one place predicate, two place predicate, three place predicate? Once we've identified that, provided it has the appropriate number of names after it, then the result will be a well-formed formula. The next two rules aren't terribly interesting in that they don't introduce anything new from propositional logic. What the second rule states is that if you have a well-formed formula, let's call it P, then the result of negating the entire thing is a well-formed formula. In the case of rule three, if we know that P and Q are well-formed formulas in uh, the language of predicate logic, then we can put them together in a conjunction, a disjunction, a conditional, or a biconditional, and the result will be a well-formed formula. The next rule states that if you have a well-formed formula, let's say you have P, and P is a well-formed formula, and that formula contains the name A, or any name for that matter. And if PX A is what results from substituting the variable X for every occurrence of A in P, then the formula AX PX A or EX PX A are well-formed formulas, provided that PX A is not a well-formed formula. This rule will require a little bit more specification. It might not be kind of clear what's going on here, so we'll come back to it. What we want to kind of identify now is that here is this rule for forming quantified formulas, for forming well-formed formulas with the quantifier associated with it. We'll come back to how the whole mechanics of this work in a moment. What this fifth rule states is that nothing else is a well-formed formula in the language of predicate logic, except those formulas that can be formed by repeated applications of the above rules. In other words, the only thing that are well-formed formulas in this language are formulas that can be formed using these four rules right here. So what I'd like to do here is go back to the two new formation rules. The first rule, makes reference to what's known as an n place predicate. That is, it says that if you have an n place predicate, let's say P or Q or let's say R or S, then provided there are n names after this predicate, then the result will be a well-formed formula. You can think of n place predicates in terms of various predicate expressions or relational expressions in English. So for example, X is tall is a one place predicate in English. And by this, what we mean is that if you were to put a name in the place of X, you would have a complete sentence. So if you have the pre one place predicate X is tall, 
Then if you substitute the name John for X, you'd have the sentence, John is tall. And so this is a kind of complete unit here. In the case of is taller than Y, what we have here is a two place predicate. There is place, there are two places for names to be slotted in or substituted in. So if we simply said John is taller than, and then we kind of stopped, we wouldn't have this complete unit here. So the two place predicate is taller than has two spots or two places for subjects or uh, names to go. And so we could say John is taller than Mary. And again, we'd have a complete unit. The same thing would be the case for is standing between X and Y. Here we have a three place predicate. There are three spots for names or um, expressions that designate objects to go in. The same thing is the case for predicate logic. We have various n place predicate terms and there are the n slots after those n place predicate terms. So if we have P and we know that P is a three place predicate, then we have three spots for an n place for names to go. If Q is a one place predicate, then one spot. If R is a two place predicate, then two spots. And if S is, let's say a five place predicate, then we have five spots. What the rule says is that we form a well-formed formula provided once we've identified the what type of predicate is, you know, if it's a two or one or three place predicate, provided it has the n terms or n names after that predicate. So if P is a three place predicate, provided we have three names, then we have a well-formed formula. If Q is a one place predicate and we have one name, then QD is a well-formed formula. Now, if R is a two place predicate and we have only one name, we have this sort of missing spot here, then at least how the rule is formulated, this is not a well-formed formula. And if S is a five place predicate and we only have two terms, A and let's say A again, then we, have, we don't have five names after the S and so it is not a well-formed formula. So now I'd like to look at the fourth formation rule because I think it's the most complicated or the one that's most difficult to understand. So I'd like to look at this rule by walking through an example. So the beginning part of the rule states that suppose that P is a well-formed formula in the language of predicate logic and that formula contains the name A, but it can be any name. So let's take an example. Let's say we have a one place predicate and it's P A. Next, let's suppose that P X slash A is what results from substituting the variable X for every occurrence of A and P. So what we're saying here is imagine a sort of substitution process where we go about replacing each instance of A with X. So in this particular case, what it would give us is since we're replacing every instance of A with X, it would give us P X. And this is not a well-formed formula, at least is how we've defined it. Then the rule states that we can put a universal quantifier as well as a variable that we used to in the substitution process in front of the result of this substitution and the result will be a well-formed formula. Or we can put an existential quantifier along with the variable X, which is the one that we use to substitute um, for the, the names. And the result will be a well-formed formula in the language of predicate logic. So just to look at our particular example here, PX is what results from replacing A with X. And so we can take this particular formula and place a universal quantifier along with the variable that we used in the substitution process in front of this formula. So A upside down AX PX and the result is a well-formed formula. Or we could put the existential quantifier in front of this formula and the result would be a well-formed formula. So this is how you make use of the fourth formation rule to form well-formed formulas that involve the universal quantifier. Let's look at one more example. Suppose we have 
R A B. And we'll suppose that R is a two place predicate. And since it, there are two names after R, we have a well formed formula. So we meet this condition. So if P is a well formed formula in language of predicate logic and it contains a name. And so we have this well formed formula. Now suppose that R Y. B is what results from replacing each instance of B with the variable Y. So this sort of substitution process would give us, what it would give us is R A Y. So what we're doing here is replacing each instance of B with a Y. Now, Given that we have our AY here, we can place either the universal quantifier in front of it, AY, RAY, and the result will be a well formed formula, or we could put the existential quantifier in front of it, RAY, and the result would be a well formed formula. So, this is another example how we might make use of the, this fourth formation rule to form well formed formulas that involve quantifiers. So it's helpful to finish up this discussion by briefly talking about, or briefly looking at a variety of well-formed formulas, formulas that are well-formed formulas and formulas that are not well-formed formulas. So let's start by looking at PA. PA, assuming P is a one place predicate, says it's followed by a single name, it's a well-formed formula. The name comes to the immediate right rather than the immediate left or above it or below it. In contrast, AP is not a well-formed formula because the name needs to come to the immediate right of the end place predicate, not to the left or above it or below it or way out in left field. RAB, assuming R is a two-place predicate, is a well-formed formula. It's a two-place predicate followed by two names that follow, come to the immediate right, so it's a well-formed formula. ARB is not a well-formed formula because, again, the names need to come to the immediate right. It has two names, but they're just not to the immediate right. RAA um, is a two-place predicate with two names to its immediate right. Even though it's the same name, that doesn't disqualify it from being a well-formed formula. It just needs two names to fill the spot. It doesn't matter what names they are. XRX is not a well-formed formula. One, because it doesn't have any names in it, and how we formulated the rule in this case is that there needs to be names following it rather than let's say variables. Not PA and RBA is a well-formed formula. Here we have two well-formed formulas and they're put together using the conjunction rule, whereas not PA, RBA, even though you have these n, the appropriate number of names, it's not put together using the correct propositional rule. Finally, assuming P is a one place predicate, we can make use of the formation rules to create this particular formula AX PX. We already showed an example of how we said, okay, let's say PA is a well formed formula, and then we can have this process where we replace A with X, and then we can take what's uh, results from that and put a universal quantifier in front of it, and it would give us AX PX. In contrast, AXPY is not a well-formed formula because there's no way to make use of this fourth formation rule to have a universal quantifier with a X in front of it where it's quantifying over or the result is this PY. To see this, let's say we start with a PA again. Now we want to um, get this sort of PY here, but here we're at a kind of crossroads. We say, well, the, the way it looks like to do this is to say, well, we're going to replace every A with Y. And the rule states that if we used Y here, then when we go to place a universal quantifier in front of it, it needs to be this same variable. So it needs to be A, Y, P, Y. But that's not A, X, P, A, X, P, Y. Um, this has a X variable where um, when we make use of the rule, it forces us to use this Y right there. So AXPY is not a well-formed formula, but in contrast, AXPX is a well-formed formula.